Welcome folks to part eight, back in Hyrule. Welcome home, how was thy honeymoon? The king questioned. We had the time of our lives, Link winked, and a grin happened upon his face. It was very beautiful, thank you so much, I said, hugging the king tightly. I really enjoyed the time with Link. Just then, Zelda spoke up. A fairy from the forest has sent word that the great Deku Tree wants to speak with you both. Link and I exchanged glances. The great Deku Tree has summoned us, I said, as I looked back at Zelda. Yes, the word came this morning. Link looked at me with a confused look. We had better not keep the great Deku Tree waiting, Link inquired. Jenna, my daughter, I will have one of your horses saddled and brought to you. I nodded, then the king and Princess Zelda returned to the castle. Okay, so the Great Deku Tree has summoned them. Um, I'm assuming that a fairy must have gone to them, but since the fairies seem to know exactly what the Great Deku Tree wants, wouldn't that imply that Navi would have known and therefore have told Link? And again, the familiarity, The uh, she hugs the king, who, by the way, is still speaking in butchered English. Ye old butchered English at that. Let's continue. After a few minutes, a stable hand came with my brown mare, Star Dancer. Link helped me up into the saddle and mounted a pony. Link gently booted a pony and she took off at a gallop. Um, okay, I'm stopping here again. You don't boot horses. They're more likely to throw you off the back. They're not going to be exactly be pleased about that. Oh, dear. I then followed. We headed to Kakiri Forest. It was not a long ride, but we had to make haste. As we arrived at the entrance to Kikiri Forest, Saria was there to greet us. You made it! The great Deku Tree is waiting, Saria said as we dismounted. I'll have your horses tended to. Please go on. We each exchanged looks when we entered Kikiri Village. All of the Kikiri watched us as we made our way through. Then we reached the entrance of the great Deku Tree's meadow. Mido, the Kikiri leader, was waiting. You must hurry, the great Deku Tree is waiting, Mido says, as he ushered us onwards. We walked down the path and into the meadow. All right, let's just stop here again. Has anybody else noticed that everybody else is attending to the horses? Why can't they deal with their own damn horse? And there's also another completely ridiculous thing here. Why are the horses actually able to get into Kikiri Village? If you remember from the actual game, Ocarina of Time, which this fic is based on, the horse couldn't go any further than the actual entrance to Kikiri Village. So, how did the horses get there? I know you could say they must have crossed that bridge, but mm -mm. it's not true to the game. Naughty, naughty. Let's carry on. As we stood in, in front of the great Deku tree, he awoke from his slumber. Link and Jenny, Thoust has arrived. Oh, God, he's talking in ye old butchered English as well, just like the king. Come, come, sit. I have great news for thee. Link and I sat down on the grass and awaited for the great Deku Tree's news. Link, hero of time, thou art courageous. Ye saved Hyrule and hast taken a wife. Jenny, thou art spiritual. Ye lost thy family, then began a vagabond's journey. Now thou hast taken a husband. Shall ye seek the blessing of a child? I turned to Link and we exchanged smiles and we said, yes. Since Hyrule is now at peace, now things are all well, but the desert man may re someday return. I give, give each of ye a guardian fairy to protect ye. Oh, oh, oh no, hold on, hold on. Link already has a fairy. Her name is Navi. She was about the most annoying character in the game. Hey, listen! 
if you remember. Is he now going to have like a a second fairy? <laughs> and that was just painful to read. The desert man may someday return. Yeah, the game's called Twilight Princess. Play it, lady. All right, let's carry on. Just then, two fairies, one with a pink aura and one with a blue aura, flew over to us. I cannot believe that fairies really exist, I thought to myself. I watched as the blue fairy flew over to Link. Long time no see, Link. How I have missed you. Link looked at the fairy and smiled big. Navi, my old friend, I have missed you too. All right, that, that explains that. Navi went and now she's back again. Um, okay. How have you been since we last saw each other? Link inquired the blue fairy. Oh, blue fairy. Hang on. Navi was pink. Do you remember? She was pink. There wasn't a blue fairy. All fairies are bloody pink. In fact, they're all pink in any version of the game. Any version. All the way up to the Breath of the Wild when you collect them from around the fairy fountains. All pink. Ah, let's carry on. Oh, great. I see you have taken a wife. She is truly beautiful, Link. You two all make beautiful children together. The fairy smiled at Link, then flew over to me, the pink one behind her. As the fairy hovered in front of me, her blue aura seemed so beautiful, so peaceful. My name is Navi, and this is Lily. Hello, the pink fairy says. We will be the guardian fairies for Link and you from now on. Navi inquired. Hang on, she's making a statement, not an inquiry. Ugh. And why all of a sudden this, you two will make beautiful children together, apart from what the great Deku tree is just said there was no indication previously in this story that they were going to have kids well unless of course you consider the author's sexual fantasies when she first met link as that but considering they met each other a couple of months ago and uh, had plenty of tiger sex and now have got married that's a bit sudden for having children, wouldn't you think? Never mind, let's carry on. I could not believe I was getting a fairy. They were only told in storybook tales where I come from. But as I looked at Navi and Lily, I was glad they were not just myths. I was glad to have a fairy partner. Navi then flew back over to Link and Lily came over to me. Hello, Jenna, it's nice to meet you, Lily said as she hovered in front of me. As I looked at the pink fairy, I was glad she was my guardian. Lily, I think we're going to be good friends. As do I, Lily responded. Then I got up and went over to Link. I threw my arms around him and looked into his eyes. He seemed to glow in the sunlight. I laid my head against his chest and began to think to myself, a guardian fairy, I would never have dreamed. It's not a myth, this is real, and I am very lucky. Okay, just one thing I've got to say here. Sometimes in this fic, it's very, very difficult to tell what she's actually saying and what she's thinking. The main reason for this is because she uses speech bubbles for both scenarios. Most people will do thoughts as italics, but no, she's put them in speech bubbles. And would you believe that that last little piece wasn't just one set of speech bubbles? It was four. She closed the speech bubbles, then opened it again after pressing the space bar. When a, just a full stop would have would have done. Well, mm, yeah, it just makes it hard to follow. Anyhow, let's continue. Just then, the great Deku Tree spoke again once more. Thou art courageous, and thou art spiritual will be protected if the desert man should ever return. Then your guardian fairies will help protect you. When thou hast thy firstborn return to see me. With his words spoken, the great Deku tree returned to his slumber. 
I held Link's hand as I looked at the two fairies. This is a truly great gift the Deku Tree has given us. Then I started to look back at Link and he nodded in agreement. Link and I then kissed before we started for home. When we returned to Kikiri Village, all of the Kikiri, especially Saria, wanted to know what the Great Deku Tree told us. Saria's eyes widened when we told her we had our own fairies, even more so when she found out Navi returned to Link. Oh, God. So everyone's still fawning over the zoo. And also, Ganondorf is not going to return in Ocarina of Time's timeline. It's dealt with. Doesn't come back until Twilight Princess. Which is set a few hundred years later. Seriously. Ugh. Does she know nothing of the Zelda timeline? Oh dear. Never mind. That is great news, Saria said cheerfully. It's great to see that Navi has returned. Link nodded and a smile crossed his face. How come they get fairies? They're not even Kikiri. A voice called from behind. Just then the headstrong Mido approached us. What makes them so special to get their own fairies? Mido questioned. Just pause in here. You know, you'd understand Link having a fairy back. After all, he is the hero of time. But Mary Sue getting a fairy too. Hmm... I must say I kind of agree with Mido on this, even though he's an arse, but never mind. Let's continue. Saria turned and looked at Mido square in the face. Link is the hero of time. He is special and so is his wife. As the Sage of Forest, I remember what Ganon said when we sealed him in the Sacred Realm. He cursed that he would get one day revenge on Link or his descendants. Just pause here. Yes, on his descendants again play twilight princess he what well, he was banished to the twilight realm which was part of the sacred realm yes comprende hmm link has already confided in me that he and his new wife plan on having children. They will need protection if Ganon should ever return. He would go after Link and his family first. Saria's eyes narrowed as she confronted Mido. Saria was always protected of Link, even more so when Mido tried to get smart. I watched as she faced off with Mido. Just pause here. Link, the hero of time, who took down, down Ganondorf... Needs protection from criticism from Mido, who has very little actual power. In fact, the only power he's got is in Kikiri Village itself as one of the leaders of that village. But even so, Saria outranks him. So, yeah, he really needs protection from criticism from Saria. Not. Let's carry on. <clears throat> When Mido saw the burning in Saria's eyes, he knew to back off. Well, they still don't deserve it. Grumble, grumble. Then Mido walked off. Saria watched as he went. I'm sorry for all that trouble. I guess he never really got over what happened eight years ago. Hold on, eight years ago? Hang on, according to what version she was on about, like, well earlier... They, didn't they jump ahead by four or five years, if I remember so, um, eight years? Oh, well, never mind, she really hasn't got timings right. Again. Saria then walked up to Link. Sigh, I guess he'll never get over it, she said as she placed her hand gently on Link's. I will always remain your friend, Link, no matter what. I will help protect you and your family should Ganon ever return. I promise, Saria says as she looked over at me. And I knew I believed her. She would go to the ends of the earth for Link, and she made me feel better as well. We spent some time there while Link said some temporary goodbyes, and I sat and talked with Lily. When it started to get late, we decided it was time to settle into our new home. Link wanted me to see it while there was still light. 
Saria went to fetch our horses. When she came back, she we mounted and headed for the Lost Woods. Link and I waved goodbye just before we disappeared into the tunnel leading for the Lost Woods. We made our way through the maze of trees and into the lodge clearing. There stood the most beautiful house I had ever seen. Oh, hold on. So many problems. First of all, even if the horses could get into Kifkiri Forest, they could not get into the Lost Woods. Why? Because you have to climb up some vines. Only a little bit of vines, but horses can't climb vines. Did we know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that would be a major, major problem. Second big problem. Anybody who spends too long in the Lost Woods, according to canon, turns into a monster. That's really where you want to settle and raise your family, ain't it? Just a thought. Right, let's continue. My eyes were transfixed on the house as I dismounted. I ran up to the front of the house and looked it over. There was a white gate in front with a fence that ran all the way around the house. A stable for horses was on the right side. A pen for sheep and pigs just off to the side near the front. There was a pasture behind the house to graze cows and horses in. And off to the left of the house was the well. The house was like a summer house. It was a light tan house with a white roof. The windows were monastery style and the front doors were brown with a carving of the Triforce symbol just below the greeting hole. And when I went inside, I was nearly blown away. Oh, hold, hold on. Think about the Lost Woods. Ocarina of Time's Lost Woods. The meadows and things that she's describing and pasture land. There wasn't any of that in the Lost Woods. It was a series of tunnels. And you had to go through the tunnels in the correct way in order to get to the other side. If you didn't, you'd return straight back to the, the beginning again. There were some little spaces there, but only with a bit of trees and a little bit of grass. There certainly wasn't room for all this shit. Where in the Lost Woods is she supposed to have space for these things? There isn't space. And I know. I've explored the Lost Woods, all of it. Ugh. The cannon-breaking idiocy just gets worse in this. It really does. The entire house was furnished. The living quarters and a wooden couch with cushions. A reading chair sat by the fireplace. There was a boot beside the couch with an oil lamp on it. Candles in stands stood all around the room while oil lamps hung from the walls. In the dining quarter stood a huge wooden table with six chairs around it. A small vase of flowers sat in the middle. The kitchen had all the cooking supplies we'd ever need. There was even a spice rack on the wall. A small ice box was in the corner and another small fireplace was in the back for cooking. There was a spiral staircase that went up to the sleeping quarters. I walked up the staircase and went into the sleeping quarters. When I reached the top, I noticed there were five doors. Four were empty and one furnished. The one that was furnished was our bed chamber. There was an Edwardian bed with beautiful white silk sheets and pillows. A wooden chair sat, uh, sat off to the right and a small table with an oil lamp sat to the left of the chair silk curtains lined the window and a war a wardrobe closet stood in the side of the room okay okay a wardrobe is a space wardrobe not a ward space robe <gasps> also an edwardian bed um they're in Hyrule, not England. They wouldn't know what Edwardian means. They should have said, well, maybe a Hylian bed or just a bed or a four-post bed or whatever. Not an Edwardian bed. 
That said, I'm glad you mentioned she had an icebox and not a fridge freezer. I mean, that would really would have taken the pee. Um, but yeah, pretty much a typical oldie worldy kind of Suvian house. So this sounds pretty standard, really. And I'm taking that those empty rooms are for those children that they're going to have. Su Susbrogs, I will call them from here on in. I was so overjoyed with the sight that when Link came up behind me, I threw my arms around him and told him I loved him and kissed him passionately. Hold on, I thought he was behind her. Can she, like, do some sort of strange double-jointed thing where she hugs him when he's behind? Hmm. I knew this was the place we were going to raise our family, the place I was going to spend the rest of my life in. Link had given me a beautiful gift. A gift of love. Oh dear me. Oh dear me. I think it's only going to go downhill from here, folks, but... There you have it. There was part eight. Tune in for part nine. <laughs>